Panorama. Movies brief here. Today, I am going to explain a Filipino thriller romance film called The Girl Allergic to Wi-Fi. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Aries and Maka are high schoolers who have been best friends since kindergarten. One morning, Aries notices a beautiful girl outside the school and is instantly attracted to her. As Maka makes fun of him for it, the new girl approaches them, asking for directions to the principal's office. Aries forgets how to talk for a few seconds before pulling himself together and helping her with the directions. For the next few weeks, he spends hours thinking about the girl. Through people in the school, he finds out that the girl's name is Norma. One day, Aries is on the basketball court, helping his popular brother with something. Norma arrives with a friend and reveals that she is actually dating his brother, Leo. Aries is heartbroken by the revelation, but hides it behind an expressionless face. During dinner, he asks Leo if it is true. Leo affirms that she was only a rebound from his last relationship at first, but he has recently started to like her. Aries doesn't tell him how he feels about Norma, scared of ruining their relationship. Every day, he watches them together and drowns in misery. He tries to move on, but the fact that they are the most Instagrammable couple doesn't help. He is forced to watch them together in all of Norma's posts. One weekend, the students are preparing for a school program when Aries gets a call from Leo. He is having some relationship problems with Norma and wants Aries to give her the phone. Suddenly, Norma's nose starts bleeding. Aries and her best friend, Margot, help her to the bathroom. Just when they think she's fine, she falls unconscious. She is immediately rushed to the hospital to run a CAT scan. The doctor reviews the test but sees nothing out of the ordinary. Norma insists he must be missing something because she's been getting strange rashes on her back. Leo and Aries come to visit her at the hospital. Norma thinks that the school's bathroom has healing powers because it's the only place where she doesn't feel dizzy. The others believe it's only a coincidence, but Aries starts researching about the phenomenon. After spending a few hours on the internet, he comes across a condition called electromagnetic hypersensitivity. This means that Norma is allergic to the electromagnetic waves emitted by phones and other devices. She feels better in the bathroom because it is a dead zone where the phones do not pick up any signal. When Norma's mother is told about this, she mentions that her bedroom is also a dead spot. Hence, Norma can only fall asleep in her bed. The doctor discloses that there is no definitive way to prove that she is suffering from the syndrome. But even if she does, the cure to it has not yet been found. The family tries various alternative methods, from acupuncture to hypnotism, but nothing works. Leo is so concerned about his girlfriend that he performs very poorly in an important basketball match. He is tired of having to run around Norma, but feels guilty when he chooses basketball over her. Her condition keeps on getting worse with each therapy session, and by the end of two weeks, she can hardly walk. The family decides to send her to her grandparents' home, which is in the countryside and has no Wi-Fi or electronic devices. She is bound to get better if she lives in the area. Norma is glad that she gets to spend time with her family. However, she is afraid that she and Leo cannot handle a long-distance relationship. Using her absence, her so-called best friend, Margot, spreads rumors about her being pregnant. Macha gets a hint of it and tells Ares. Leo promised to visit Norma every weekend. However, he gets lost on the way and has to return home. Meanwhile, Ares and Macha drive with Norma's mother so they do not have any difficulty. It turns out that Leo prioritized basketball practice instead of accompanying them in the morning. Norma is disheartened because she hasn't talked to him for a whole week because there is no Wi-Fi. The next weekend is also the same. She excitedly waits for her boyfriend, who never arrives, while Aries and Macha visit her with several gifts. Aries has also made a tinfoil hat that is supposed to deflect the electromagnetic waves and help her. Norma is thankful that he's doing so much for her recovery, but she secretly wishes Leo was the one doing it. During their next visit, Macha shows Norma a screenshot of Margot making fun of her. The group decides to teach her a lesson, although Aries is skeptical about the plan. They make Aries dress up as Margot and take pictures of him. Then, Macha hacks a group chat and posts a picture of Margot and Norma together, saying that Margot forced Norma to have an abortion. The news makes Norma's friend stop talking to her. 
However, the plan backfires when the screenshot of the message goes around the school and people start believing that Norma actually had an abortion. The next weekend, Leo visits Norma for the first time in weeks. She excitedly runs to him, but he pushes her back. His teammates and coach also saw the abortion post and think that he forced Norma to do it. He is furious at her because the rumor might cost him his entire basketball career. Norma apologizes, but Leo is in no mood to listen. He breaks up with her before driving back to the city. Norma is heartbroken after the incident. She hardly sleeps or eats, which slows her recovery. After a little encouragement from her grandmother, she writes a letter to Leo, apologizing and asking for a visit. Leo gets the letter, but asks the maid to throw it away without even reading it. Ares feels bad for Norma, hence, he writes a reply on his brother's behalf. Soon, they begin exchanging letters almost every day. The letters make Norma fall in love with Leo even more, unaware that Ares is the one writing them. She wakes up every day, waiting for a reply, and is seemingly happier than she had been for the past month. One day, Macha, Ares, and Norma go cycling around the neighborhood. They come across some children playing with a string phone. The group gives it a try, but the device doesn't work. Knowing that Norma cannot hear him, Ares tells her that he loves her through the phone. Following that, they go to the bridge that is the border of the village. Further away from the bridge is a cliff that Norma wants to visit but cannot because of her condition. Ares urges her to try to see if the tinfoil really works. For a few seconds, she feels normal, but then her nose starts to bleed again. They quickly return home and help her. Ares feels responsible because he urged her to go past the bridge, but Norma assures him that she is fine. The following week is Norma's birthday. Her grandmother invites all of them to the party, but all Norma wants is for Leo to be there. In the following scene, Macha and Ares are at the grocery store. Macha knows that he has been writing the letters and wants him to tell Norma the truth. Ares also knows it is the right thing to do, but he cannot bring himself to hurt her. On the day of her birthday, Norma is eagerly waiting for Leo. Ares makes up an excuse that he will be late, but Norma is willing to wait as long as she can. As a birthday present, Ares made her a car covered with aluminum foil to take her to the cliff she wanted to visit. He has done more research on electromagnetic deflection and thinks that the car would work better than the hat. The three give it a try and are ecstatic when it actually works. They drive to the cliff and watch the sunset together. As they talk about different things, Norma reveals that she wanted to be a pilot before getting sick, but has given up on the dream. On their way back home, Macha leaves them alone for a while, so Ares can tell Norma the truth. Although nervous, he does the right thing and tells her the letters were from him, not from Leo. Norma is shocked and doesn't know what to think of it. She was under the impression that her relationship with Leo was back on track, but knowing that he is still mad at her breaks her heart again. They drive back home in silence, but are met with another surprise when they see Leo waiting for her at the door. He apologizes for everything, and the two reconcile. Still, Norma cannot get the thought of Ares out of her head. Starting that day, she and Leo go back to their normal selves. But whenever they spend time together, Leo is either sleepy or tired because of basketball practice. Norma understands his problem, but realizes that she liked him in the letters way more than she does in real life. One day at school, Ares is approached by a girl who asks him to tell Leo to pick up her calls. Confused, Ares inquires who she is when the girl discloses that she is Leo's girlfriend. Later that day, he confronts Leo about her and he admits that he dated her right after breaking up with Norma. He tries to rationalize it by claiming that he loves Nora and was sad after the breakup, but Ares is not convinced. The next day, the brothers visit her again. Ares urges Leo to tell her the truth but he is too much of a coward to admit his mistake. The three go on a walk together when a blue and yellow butterfly lands on Ares' shoulder. Leo and Norma bring out their cameras to take a picture when Norma suddenly notices a picture of Leo and a girl in his preview window. Leo quickly puts his phone inside his pocket and pretends like he doesn't know what Norma is talking about. Norma furiously walks back to the house while Leo follows her, claiming that the girl is just a friend. She asks Ares to tell her the truth and that puts him in a dilemma. He takes his brother's side and affirms that the girl is just his friend. However, Norma doesn't believe him. She belittles the two for making a fool out of her and asks them both to go away. Back at home, Ares and Leo get into an argument. Ares wants his brother to admit his mistake and respect Norma, 
but Leo retaliates that Ares is no saint himself. It turns out that he knows about Ares' true feelings for Norma. Before the two get into a physical fight, Ares walks away and drives back to Norma's home. She refuses to talk to him, but he waits for her for an entire day. When she still doesn't come out of her room, he leaves her a message in her grandmother's old recorder. On the drive back home, Ares' mother asks him to pick up Leo from a bar where he is drinking with his friends. Although they are not on good terms, Ares goes to help him. Leo apologizes and hugs his brother, knowing that he was in the wrong. After reconciling, they drive back home Leo admits that he is not good enough for a girl like Norma and gives Ares the green light to tell her how he feels. Just when Ares starts believing he and Norma might have a happy ending, their car is hit by a truck. The next morning, Nora is informed that the accident injured Leo severely, but it killed Ares. Her heart plummets at the news and she breaks down crying. She is persistent about going to his funeral, even if it makes her sick. Her grandmother gives her the tape recorder before she leaves for the funeral. Their car stops working when they reach the bridge. While everyone is busy, Norma takes the opportunity to listen to the recording. On it, Ares has expressed his love for the first time. He tells her about how he fell in love with her when he first saw her, but never confessed because she was happy with his brother. As tears run down her face, a blue and yellow butterfly appears on the window. It looks exactly like the one that had sat on Ares' shoulder the previous day. She follows it outside, and it leads her to the other side of the bridge. Even without the aluminum foil, Norma feels fine. She realizes that Ares is by her side at that moment. The family then goes to the funeral, where Leo is in a wheelchair. Cut to a few years later, we see Norma get into an airplane as its pilot. She keeps Ares' picture in front of her and asks him if he is ready to fly. The movie ends as she takes off into the air. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.